anything going on this weekend? It's a big one, actually. This is the big one, right? Like Arsenal, you get this little twinge in your stomach, right. this little sickness. I was fired at 6 p.m. from the Daily Mirror for 10 years, but quietly thinking to myself, I can't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> to an outsider, passion can resemble madness. Yeah. You're still the bigger club. Yeah, of North London. The fans have reached a fever pitch. Tonight, in the minds of everyone here, they have already won. But tomorrow will bear an entirely different reality. In 12 hours, Arsenal and Tottenham, two great teams with storied traditions, will meet and fight for dominance in a rivalry that has spanned decades. You cannot overcome the feeling of North London down. London, the Alexandra Road housing estate looks like an outdated utopian vision for the future. Like the prow of a concrete ship, it cuts through the gray English landscape. In the back sits a neighborhood pitch where a local college team is practicing. While we focus so much on the great and historic Premier League clubs, it's easy to forget that for many people, a pitch like this, surrounded with friends and teammates, is how most people first experience football. Um, I don't imagine ever not being involved in football. You can't be. You have to go there. You have to experience it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not really something that you can put in words. This working class part of North London is dominated by two teams, Arsenal and Tottenham. Historically, Arsenal has always been the most dominant. They have 13 league titles and 13 FA Cups. A history highlighted in 2004 when Arsenal became the first English team since the 19th century to go an entire season unbeaten. They were the Invincibles. But Tottenham Hotspur has been fighting back for decades, fighting to prove their own strength. Winning the League Cup in 2008, and in 2017, finishing in the league above Arsenal for the first time in 22 years. Now, the money is pouring in. There's a new stadium on the horizon, and star striker Harry Kane is leading the way. Tottenham is proving itself again to be a formidable foe. In a few days, North London will become a battleground for one of the fiercest rivalries in Premier League football. Founded in 1886 by munitions factory workers in Woolwich, Arsenal nicknamed the club the Gunners, and their hardcore fans adopted the nickname the Gooners. For over 130 years, the Gooners have filled their ranks with fans from all over the world and all walks of life. Your father's a Tottenham fan. How did you manage to escape the grips of Tottenham mania? Charlie George, long-haired centre forward, 1971, Wembley, the FA Cup final, scored the winning goal, 25-yard screamer, sank to his knees. Memorable, iconic image, and he had the best chance in world football. Charlie George, superstar, looks like a girl and he wears a bra. I couldn't do it anymore. Then. The stadium would thunder with that ridiculous chant. He'd been a fan in the North Bank at 18. Three years later, he's the centre forward and scoring at the North Bank. Mm. He was one of us. 
And so I became a, a, an Arsenal fan. My dad was remarkably tolerant um, until we started winning everything. <laughs> then he became remarkably stolid. The Frenchman Dash wasn't picked out of Vieira's ears, and Vieira's come back for Vieira. Two goals for Arsenal. It was May 2004, and Arsenal was on the way to an extraordinary undefeated season. Unbeaten for 38 games, they were a team that would go down in the history books as the Invincibles. Here's level of commitment to Arsenal is best exemplified by going back to one of the darkest periods in his life. What about the allegations that you didn't cooperate with the investigation? You cooperated fully. I was fired at 6 p.m. on the Friday night from the Daily Mail for 10 years editing a daily paper in this country, one of the biggest selling papers. Right. So professionally, it wasn't a great moment. Probably about as bad as I've ever had right. as a journalist. But quietly thinking to myself, I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. This is going to be the greatest day ever. Got into my seat, and then the party started. I still have a picture of me 15 hours after I was scandalously fired and thrown into the street and washed up and ruined. And here I am looking like the happiest human being you've ever because seen. Because you were. Because we were invincible. What a job he's done. Out of that season, peers and millions of Arsenal fans worldwide found a hero. Thierry Henry. The Frenchman best exemplified Arsenal's revolutionary, free-flowing, continental style of play. The 1998 World Cup winner was truly unstoppable as a gunner. He led the league in scoring four times, and he terrorized opposing defenders with his speed, his skill, and his strength. Some say he's the greatest forward to ever play in the Premier League. And when he stepped onto the pitch, it was must-watch TV. Thierry Henry. He, to me, was the nearest thing to a human, godlike figure I have ever met in my life. He said to me, Beans, I know you are a diehard fan, Arsenal fan. He said, uh, I have a little uh, gift for you. <laughs> it is my shirt. And it was his Premier League shirt. He'd written on the back already. Right. Two peers, a true Guna. Right. From Thierry. Guna for life. Okay, let's just sit on that for a second. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. In this transactional world, yeah. Thierry Henry. Gives you this share here. Yeah. And I think that to mean all the world the world to you. I was emotional. Mm -hmm. We hugged. Yeah. There were tears. For I went home. I rang my sons. I went, look at this. Look at what he's written. Guna for life. This is forever. He's going nowhere. Right. You know why I know that? He wrote it on his own shirt. Yeah. Signed for Barcelona in July. Mm. How did that make you? It broke my bloody heart. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a death in the family. It's worse than that. The bottom line with it is, footballers will always break your heart. Managers will break your heart. The club never leaves you. Present day, Arsenal's future looks more uncertain. Last season, Tottenham finished ahead of them in the Premier League for the first time since 1995. But it's not only Gooners who are wary about the future. You can sense a feeling of uneasiness across all of London as the shadow of Brexit looms on the horizon. It was an earthquake, Britain turning its back on Europe, a shaken Prime Minister resigning. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. A lot of Americans are wringing their hands about Donald Trump. Not all, but about two-thirds. A lot of people in Britain saying, You've got a problem with a man. But we have a problem with a system that just doesn't work anymore. When I hear British people say to me, isn't it crazy what's going on in American politics? I'm like, have you looked at our politics? We just yeah. left the European Union yeah. for reasons that can only be linked back to the days when we thought we were some kind of empire. It's a very turbulent time globally. And I think what's happened in America with the Trump election, what happened here with Brexit, actually what it adds up to is people just saying, I've had enough of 
a conventional way of doing things, and I think it's driven by social media. If people don't change their minds anymore. Social media, when was the last time you saw somebody implacably opposed to Trump saying anything positive about him at all, let alone coming around to him, or vice versa? Same with Brexit. Your Brexit will remain, and there is a massive wall right in the middle of it. So these are unprecedented times. So actually, oh, okay. you owe it to me for launching oh, your okay. miserable okay. little TV career. As every yen has a yang, so does Piers' unwavering love for Arsenal. Lord Sugar has long acted as Morgan's public foil. Former owner of Tottenham Hotspur, a billionaire and host of The British Apprentice, You've had second. nothing to do with one, my team grip, second, other second. than be a complete irritant no. before, during, and after it. Nonsense. Lord Sugar has rarely missed an opportunity to knock Piers down a few pegs. You and Piers go after each other in good good. Is it showbiz? Or do you really well, you see, the thing the, is, the, the thing is, Piers Morgan will, might be known in America. Mm. Okay, I'm not, actually. Not known, very, not known at all. But the Americans will know uh, uh, there is somebody needed in this world to keep him down. And I am the chosen person in England. I'm the one that keeps him under control. She's not a bad right. fellow, but you have to give him a little slapping now and again right. just to keep him down. You made him do something that nobody else would do. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Cruel and unusual. Well, we had to raise £50,000 for comic relief on Good Morning Britain. And I said, well, there's no chance of that happening. If you get it there, I'll, I'll wear a top of shirt. Sure enough, on the morning of the fundraising, it was going quite slow. 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, and they hit a bit of a buffer. Right. And I was like, you're, you're not going to make it. There's no chance of me wearing a Tottenham shirt. There never was a chance of me wearing a Tottenham shirt. That's why I said I'd do it. Then Lord Sugar, who's watching from his palatial gin palace yacht down in the south of France, rings in, how sure are you? Not a height question, it was about the amount we raised. Yeah. Uh, 42 grand, it's never happening. Check's on his way. Done. <laughs> he was prepared to pay tens of thousands of pounds just to see me in a Tottenham shirt. So I had to wear the Tottenham shirt. It was the single worst moment of my entire life. He did it. He said it was the low point of his life. Well, let's hope um, we can keep, it, keep wearing it. My history as an Arsenal fan started in about 1977. I've had the season ticket from when I was 17. Same people I sit with to this day. My son is Arsenal. I take him as regularly as I can. Not against Arsenal and Tottenham. The North London derby can be vicious. We're in Arsenal and Tottenham territory at the moment. Uh, it's 50-50. Obviously a few more Tottenham shirts lately, as we're not doing so good, should I say. And I will get it on Monday if we lose. Basically. <laughs> There's no hiding for me. I can't hide like other people. So, yeah, there's no hiding for me. I will get it. Big time. <laughs> Support for both Arsenal and Tottenham is fervent and consuming, which is why I find myself outside of London in the county of Essex. Keith Martin takes fan devotion to an entirely new level. If the museum dedicated to Arsenal in his backyard doesn't convince you, well, maybe the cannon on his front lawn will. You told them about the houses where your cannon is aimed at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cannon there is aimed at that house because he's a full son. Were they both doing that? Oh, yeah. I think he's an example of an extreme fan. <laughs> I understand him because I'm also a football supporter. <laughs> I don't have his... Um... Lunacy. Do you have anything in here that has special meaning to you? They picked 50 fans to have their posters all around the ground. I was chosen, so we got yeah. the poster. Oh my God. And I've now yeah. managed to get nearly 60 players who I've seen play for the club. Oh my Sorry. God. Liam Brady there was one of our big top players yeah. from one Guna to another. You've gone literally all over the world. All over Your the world. Your entire life. I would say it's well, like a religion to you, but. I just. Have to be there when they play. I suppose you can call it a way of life. Obviously, this is a big week. Yes. North London to Derby. Yeah. Yeah. How nervous do you get in the week leading up to it? They've always been in our shadow. They would love to have won what we've won. As much as it pains me to say, you know, the last couple of seasons they've they've done really well. They're getting better, aren't and they? They're getting better. Yeah. But you know, and they still ain't won nothing. 
and they were better than us last season, but we won a trophy they give their right arm for. Keith's trophies surround him, on his shelves, his walls, and even his skin. Covered in Arsenal ink, Keith has even turned his body into a shrine to the club. However, these Arsenal tattoos weren't given to him by a fellow gooner. They were emblazoned by the enemy incarnate, a Tottenham fan that is extreme on Keith's level. The godfather of the London tattoo scene. Lal Hardy has been tattooing not only fans, but also players on both sides of the pitch for over 40 years. He started his career in the 1970s, when England's economically depressed and disenfranchised working class gave birth to the rebellious UK punk scene. The Sex Pistols, The Clash, The Addicts, The Damned, all bands that put a sharp edge back into rock and roll and created a counterculture that lives on today. Over the next few decades, Lau defined what it meant to be tattooed in London. Uh, I've been at this shop since 1982, the year Tottenham beat Queen's Park Rangers in the FA Cup final. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a few Tottenham tattoos of me. There's a, a cockerel with 1882 there, the year that the club was formed. There's Spurs there, N17 there, THFC there. I've got this one, and Spurs under there. I think I've got coins there somewhere. Special one there. Sitting in his chair is like taking a seat in the confession booth. All is heard, and all is forgiven. That is, unless you're a gooner. I think I ended up supporting Tottenham because my grandfather and my father, they were Irish immigrants. When Tottenham have a really great win or that, I just sometimes think if there is such a thing as heaven, maybe my dad's up there with my granddad and they got a grandstand view and they're cheering, you know. I mean, it's silly, but... That is the passion of football. It's quite funny, I tattooed lots of footballers from different clubs. So many Tottenham players have been here. Ledley King, Jermaine Defoe, Aaron Lennon, Korluka, Pavlichenko, Jack Wiltshire from Arsenal, he got tattooed here. It's Emmanuel Adibayor, you imagine he was playing for Arsenal. I think Tottenham fans will point to the fact that Arsenal basically used collusion and bribery to get into the uh, first division many years ago at the expense of Tottenham. He's uh, tattooing this on a map. He wouldn't even Tottenham. know about it. After what was it, the first World War? No, the second World War, yeah? Right, so you so don't even know, I can't even be bothered to tell you. Fair enough, so there you go. There is nothing that you could offer me to make me wear a Tottenham shirt. Would you wear an Arsenal shirt? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And I wouldn't tattoo Sol Campbell if you came in there. Football banter can be really, really funny, and I'd hate to see that be lost from the game. Definitely, that's a really important part of British football culture and, and the heritage of it, and, and long may it remain. My little girl, is, um, she's now just turned 19 months old, and I remember uh, watching some football and I was swearing, I was like, I'm losing, you know, and kids, they're so receptive, they, they pick words up. One day I was like, I need to get her to like, not say this word, and then I thought, oh, actually, she, well, I can't stop her from saying it, I can make it funny. But if you look at this... What do you think of Tottenham? Thank you. Terrible, mate. Terrible. Yes. I didn't make her say it, she's her choice, you know, she's picked her side of the room. People get very, very passionate about football. In a mad world that we live in, this job here, brings me in contact with people on a daily basis that quite often have suffered great tragedies, personal loss, and when you hear those stories and when you meet those people, you realise that that 90 minutes on a Saturday or a Sunday, whenever it is, enjoy it, enjoy the passion. Sometimes football makes old men become young men. Spurs back with a Tottenham fan and uh, he's an Arsenal fan. Yeah, everyone has a team, you know. It becomes tribal at a very young age, I suppose. We're in the same band and you know, it gets a bit difficult when we finish above them in the league. You know, we just enjoy the game and you know, we have a bit of banter between us, but we haven't stabbed each other yet. Ray Parler was part of some of Arsenal's most iconic moments. Parler played for the club between 92 and 2004 and was thought of as an unsung hero among Arsenal fans. He was ironically nicknamed the Romford Pele. 
for his consistently solid yet unglamorous play. I joined Arsenal 11 years old, so it was always a dream to one day to play for the first team. You were called the wrong for Pelé. Uh, it was it was 98 season, 97, 98, and we had a little player called Mark Overmars. Now, in training one day, and I smashed this ball 30 yards out, straight in the top corner. Right. And little Mark Overmars run past me, and you are like the wrong for Pelé. And I said to him, you don't even know where Romford is. He went, no, I don't. So he's gone into the press room and all the, the reporters are there. And the first question they asked him, can you beat Manchester United this year? And little Mark Overmars went, we'll definitely win the league this year because we've got the Romford Pele on our side. And I didn't realise he had said it. Oh my God. So next day in the papers, they, they printed it. Okay. No, 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 what, what, what are you what doing? doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. But lucky enough, we did win the league that yeah. year. So it did work in the end. Early in Ray Parler's career, Arsenal decided to bring on a new manager, Arsene Wenger changed Arsenal forever. Over 21 years later, he's still managing the team, having led them to three Premier League titles and seven FA Cups. Let's talk about Wenger, somebody you obviously feel close to. Right now, it seems like the club, the fans, are all divided on his future. That's putting a new generation of supporters um, saying, well, we want this to progress. We want to compete with Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Man City, Manchester right. United. That's the reason we moved from Highbury to, to the Emirates. Um, but he has done wonders for the club. I think everybody respected him, and that is so important as a manager. Uh, yeah. Respect. Players are going to play for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly in that era I played in, uh, was probably the most successful time ever in Arsenal's history. To score a goal in the FA Cup final for myself against Chelsea. And then five days later, go to Old Trafford to win the double. Uh, and get man a match there was that that was probably one of the f best five days of my life definitely is it tough seeing criticism that he comes under all the time of course it is and i'm sure when he does leave um the fans will say look he, he's done wonders for our club and i'm sure as soon as he does leave they'll be making his statue straight away there's so many people that watch these matches week in and week mm -hmm. week out have no idea what it's like when you walk onto the field, especially for a match like this. What's it like and what does it mean to the players? It means everything, especially, um, you know, if you've grown up uh, in the youth teams and reserves and played against Spurs all, all the way through your life. I mean, to go out on that pitch, the war, there's always that little bit of extra atmosphere uh, in the North London derby. You know, these games are, uh, are so important to not just the clubs, uh, the, the supporters. And I've played in many North London derbies and you can see the uh, the hostility between both sets of fans. So uh, I'm sure it'd be the same uh, on Saturday. Do you have a memory of North London derby? Well, the worst one was probably Sol Campbell. The atmosphere always special for a North London derby, but this year's has an extra element. And all because of the presence of one man. Campbell. Spurs fans have faced many indignities through the years, but few moments compare to Saul Campbell's switch from Tottenham to Arsenal in 2001 on a free transfer. Okay, looking to get in front. Oh, Campbell's missed his kick. Saul Campbell's first return to White Hart Lane, not quite a triumphant one. His first day back at White Hart Lane will go down in history as one of the most vitriolic matches in Premier League history. The first game back at White Hart Lane uh, was so hostile, it really was. I've never seen an, ap an atmosphere like it. I thought there was going to be a riot at one stage. Right. It, was that, it was that fierce. After the game, we get onto the, uh, the coach on the way home. They've got missiles and they're gonna, we're going to get pelted, our, our coach. So I'm sitting in the back and I said to the Arsene Menger, boss, I've got an idea. So it all goes quiet. So Arsene Menger stands up, what is it, bro? And I said, uh, boss, why don't we just get a big sign and put Sol Campbell sits here. At least they can get the right window. <laughs> As you head to White Hart Lane, you see a club looking to the future. Tottenham is constructing a new stadium at a price tag that could reach over a billion dollars. Men and women scale scaffolding to build this monument to football as countless cranes tower overhead in this blue-collar neighborhood. I sat down with Tottenham hero Ledley King in a room that is half office building, half spaceship. For Tottenham, Ledley was one of those rare talents that comes along only a few times in a generation. He was a one-club man. Playing over 300 matches for Tottenham is a feared defender, who is beloved by fans and even respected by those who played against him. So I mentioned before Henri said that you were the best defender he ever played against. Who's the best striker you, you ever played against? Henri. He said, by the way, I'm yeah. sure you saw the quote, he said he's the only one that can tackle yeah, me without fouling me. Yeah. Yeah. You were a one-club man 
Willis, which is really, really unusual. How special has that been, not only to you, but also to the fans here <clears throat> that follow Tottenham? It's been amazing, and I think I'm, I'm reaping the rewards now, you know, now that I'm retired. Whenever I meet the fans, you could have gone to a lot of different places, yeah. but you decided to stay here. Why? I joined the club at the age of 14. Right. So I've been playing in this this, this fixture mm -hmm. for a long, long time. You know, I, I love the club. I've always felt that it would be more special to win one or two trophies with this club than to, to go elsewhere and win four, five, six. Obviously, you had to fight through a lot of injuries. I had a knee knee problem. I don't know where the king is feeling that uh, injury that he's been struggling with. But... I had a major operation at the age of 26, and and after that, I couldn't really train. You know, we had to pick and choose at times the, the two weekend games, or, or if it was a real important game, mm. to play the midweek one, and then probably maybe miss the weekend, the following weekend. You're still such a part of this team, a goodwill ambassador, but you do a lot of work around around this part of town too. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, I had the opportunity now to go out and, and speak to, to young people, try and educate them. And sometimes that's all it takes just to see someone from your area. You think to yourself, why not me? If that person can do it, why not me? And I try to let kids know that they can achieve anything they, that, it, that they put their mind to. Do you think the game's going in the right direction? Uh, yeah, you, sometimes you hear fans talk about how Roman Abramovich can just come in and, you know, write massive checks. Is it good for the process because it's not just the same four teams uh, winning every year? Yeah, I think it's great for the, for the league. It's a spectacle. You know, you want the best players in the league. You're excited to, to put yourself up against them mm -hmm. and test yourself. And as much as money helps, you really can't buy that chemistry, can you? No, no. I mean, you look at someone like Harry Kane now, someone who's come through the youth set up, you know, the relationship that he has with the fans. And these players care because they've been playing for the club from young, from a young age. Once they're there, they don't want to let that opportunity go. So, you know, you see these players giving everything every week to, to, to win for the club and, and you can't buy that. Yeah. Can you tell us what what the rivalry means uh, between Tottenham and Arsenal? It's the first fixture that you look for as a player. You look for mm -hmm. Arsenal. When, when are we playing Arsenal? And I'm sure they look at when they're playing Tottenham. Do you sense that Arsenal may not be walking with much of a swagger around Tottenham now than they were, say, four or five years ago? You know, all the signs are there that, that, that Tottenham are the team on the up. But one thing I do know is that, that in the North London derby, anything can happen. I've been an Arsenal fan pretty much all my life. He's a Tottenham supporter, so he doesn't guy, like this. You mean a real football team? <laughs> They're a bit happy this year because, you know, they're a little bit above us on the table. But, but it's been years for them to achieve that success, tiny bit of success. In a sport driven by fans' passions, one man looked to give a platform to the conversations he heard around kitchen tables and pubs. Robbie Lyle created a YouTube channel called Arsenal Fan TV. And while it was at first a passion project, it tapped into a populist desire of fans to have their voices finally heard. He now has over 600,000 YouTube followers, and he holds court outside every game to get fellow supporters unfiltered reaction. I got black Let's talk about what you've done. Where did you get the idea? I'd watch TV and some of the conversations being held about a game would be completely different to what I heard here in the pub. Right. You know, and I'm like, well, I want to hear from the fans. Why is there not a platform for fans to have their say? Nine minutes to go. We need a goal. We take off and we find a striker. Why? Arsenal fan TV. Boom! Boom! <laughs> yes! Fantastic! The idea is I wanted to create a platform where ordinary fans, any Arsenal fan, as long as you support Arsenal Football Club, you can have your say on this platform. Because we didn't test their defence, did we? I mean, well, that's because our new £50 million lucky to get forward was on the bench. But you're a celebrity now. People come up to you just as much or more than if you were. Mm. At the BBC or in the yeah, it's, it's, or it's, it's somewhere it's else. Absolutely, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy and incredible. And you know, it's not just fans of football. It's just like, I just I can't even go to my local shop no more without having to do pictures and that. <laughs> oh, oh, What's been the craziest moment 
there's been a lot of crazy moments. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, you know what, right, like, so me, my favourite player of all time is Thierry Henry, mm -hmm. and um, we got to interview him, and I'm there, I'm standing there, and I'm, I'm like, what am I going to say? I'm yeah. so starstruck and things like that. And then I walk into the room to interview Thierry Henry, and as I walk in, he says, Hey, it's Robbie. How oh, are you no doing? Way. He goes, oh, I love Arsenal fans. No. Like, Wait, like, you're what? kidding me. I'm That's like, insane. I'm like, Thierry Henry, who I worship. That's the greatest. He's saying, oh, I love you. Oh, and, my God. And those sort of moments. And, and I'm Ian Wright as that's well. Like, that's like when you knew. Yeah, no, when I start to see things like I'm like, yeah. well, actually, this thing's getting crazy. All we ask is get it every single week. Today, every single player, like I said, was absolutely brilliant. The one thing that is a given for every Arsenal fan is we have to beat them. Yeah. We did a thing on our channel where um, there was this betting company and they said, if you can get an Arsenal fan to put on a Tottenham shirt, we'll give them a thousand pounds. Don't care. No, no amount of money is worth my dignity. You can keep it. Every single fan we went up to said, "Are you mad? <laughs> I want to put that on for a million pounds just to put the shirt off." Yeah, be down, man. No way. No way. See what? Best place for it. You know, I've been to American sports and I've been to like Boston Celtics versus the Knicks and things like that. And it doesn't even compare to this. This is like this yeah. is. On the day, it's, 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 it's hatred. It's tribal. It's hatred. It's, it's hatred. tribal, yeah. A few miles away, in a Tottenham supporters pub, it is old school. I was introduced to the rabbi, a Tottenham supporter who's flown the Hotspur banner through bad times and good. And now he's ready to celebrate the club's current success. No, 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 no. So why do they call you the rabbi? Jewish, bone and break. Why do they call you the chief rabbi? Because I've given belief. Start believing. That's what he said. Because we are on the verge of sunny of Big stadium. Of greatness. New stadium. End of story. He says it as he sees it. You've had a lot of abuse oh, you've done you through the years. Yeah, I listen. You I don't care, do you? He likes it. He said, I'm a boo You know what I mean? Thank you very much. To the Chief Rabbi. Come on, baby. All right. You guys hate Arsenal? Hey, oh, we, we, we shouldn't even passionate. call him that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We we call him that. Yeah. Yeah. What they say is, yeah, you may have been better than them last year, but you still haven't won anything. Bad even time. the Gooners will admit it's our time. Yes, that's why they've done it. Yeah. Some that's of them don't want to admit it. They can't admit defeat. It's progression. Right. This progression, right. yeah. progression. we will get there. Like right. Manchester City, Manchester United, Man United had it. Man City had it now. Liverpool, Everton, you know, everyone gets their turn, and it's our turn. So talk about how it's going to be on Saturday, how intense it's going to be. We'll be all lively, we'll be looking to, you know, on the pitch, off the pitch, intimidate them, let them know that North London is ours. Arsenal, you get this little twinge in your stomach yeah. about three days before, and I've got it, Right. this little sickness, they know we're coming. We let them know we're coming. All your kids, uh, oh, oh, Tottenham oh. fans too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Once my boy said to me, Dad, oh, all my mates are full Arsenal, and blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, do what you want. If you want to support Arsenal, mate, that's fine. But find somewhere else to live. Arsenal, you've done and dusted. It's our derby. It's our win or plan. Maybe I want to see the game with you. On Saturday. Why don't you come sit next to me? I can't do I got the best seats in the place. Why can't you go? Because I've been banned. Now what the hell? What grounds have you been banned from? What grounds? Everyone. Find you. I've allegedly been a hooligan. Allegedly. 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 They never proved it. They never proved it. I've never seen the pictures. Have you seen the pictures? I've never seen the pictures. Right. Now, something the police, yeah. they wanted me. Yeah. Tonight is the night. Drinks flow. Promises are made. Everything is possible. And for each side, victory seems inevitable. is 
deep between these two clubs, forever locked in this neighbor versus neighbor conflict. Arsenal carries the banner of history. Tottenham keeps their eyes locked on the future. Who wins tomorrow? Well, that's anybody's guess. <laughs> Tottenham's the best thing. to be an Arsenal fan. Yeah, it's pretty tough. We're the worst we've been since I can remember. Tottenham's the best they've been. I used to have a cross here, replaced it with a cannon. Arsenal football is my only religion. As inebriation turns to hangover, match day finally arrives. The Arsenal Supporters Club is expecting nothing less than a win. It's just another game, really. Oh, you're just you're <laughs> lying so much to me. Why do you lie when telling the truth with the confidence. Here? You're not confident, though. Always. You used to be confident. Always confident. Things have changed. Whatever. Haven't you heard? All the time, yeah. fans say things have changed. They're on the rise. You all are they're, they're, rubbish. They're, they're, no, 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 no. no. They're delusional. That's what they're I They're delusional. Are yeah. you all more worried today than usual? He says he's not, but come on, Lowe. You're worried. You, you can't go to matches being nervous. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point of going? Right. You've got to go thinking you're going to win. You do think you're going to win? Of course. Why is that? because I'm an Arsenal supporter and they're my team and it's the North London derby so of course we're going to win. These empty streets will soon be filled with bloodshot eyes as rabid fans ready to start their game day procession. from the night before like a little hair of the dog and for arsenal supporters the gunners pub is the only place to get it we're surrounded by photos and mementos of arsenal success the faces of heroes that cover those walls today's game is clouded by rumbles of tottenham's newly minted superiority the chants flow as quickly as the beer. Supporters have come from across the world, all excited to see a victory. Where did the chants come from? Are they just picked up throughout history? It's history, it's folklore. Right. Ready Arsenal. London is red. Years, and now it's starting to get a little bit better in aspect. We, we're yeah. still defeating the club, we're still one more than them, but we'll always be better than Tottenham. What do you think of Tottenham? <laughs> what do you think of Tottenham? Thank you! That's alright! We ain't Tottenham! 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 The mere four miles between these two clubs quickly evaporates as the rabbi leads a battalion of Tottenham supporters toward the stadium making their presence known in enemy territory. The sky opens up and the rain lets loose. We're about 30 minutes before game time and just on cue, boom, the rain starts. The fans aren't going to care. Maybe some of us from America will. But it's going to be a heck of a game. The second it starts up, uh, nobody's going to be worried about how cold or wet they are. They're just going to care about who wins this thing. The crowds keep swelling nonetheless, swept up by a massive wave of red and blue. I head toward the clock end at the Emirates. The North London Derby is the great equalizer. Anything can happen. So today, will it be history or destiny? We'll soon find out. When I was a little kid, I went to the Arsenal Stadium and I was training with the um, other little junior division kids there. 
police have these little tournaments and what have you. It's part of what creates the country naturally. You know it as a match and it affects everything. Suck a religion over here. <laughs> While Arsenal fans may be debating the future of legendary manager Arsene Wenger's 21-year reign, for Tottenham supporters, there is no question. Mauricio Pochettino is Tottenham's manager for the future. A former Argentine professional footballer, it was Pochettino who brought up a young academy player by the name of Harry Kane. In December, the 24-year-old striker became the first Premier League player in history to score six hat tricks in a calendar year. With a total of 56 goals scored for club and country, Harry Kane became the first player since 2009 to outscore Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, becoming Europe's top goal scorer for 2017. But will Harry Kane be enough to give Tottenham the edge today? The day when the Emirates comes to life, it is a wonderful view, looking down on such vivid colours, timeless colours, the colours of Arsenal and Spurs again. The match begins, just as the rains flood down, adding even more drama to the story. The roar of the crowd rumbles, from the north bank to the clock end of Emirates. It's cold, it's wet, and it's unforgiving, but I can't imagine being anywhere else right now. In this moment, it's hard not to feel like you've become part of something much bigger than yourself. The pitch is drenched, but neither team is letting up. The collisions are brutal, but the players drive relentless. And did I mention the fans? celebration in the stands, I spot Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV in a stairwell, holding court in a crush of ecstatic gooners. Come on, you gooners! Come on! Talk about that power shift in North London they've been talking about all week. Over in America, they may not know this term, it says you've got no bottle. Yeah, and that's Spurs. They've got no bottle, right? They fought it against today. We showed Tottenham today that the, the best club in this area of North London is Arsenal. This game is for the fans. 
It is for the men and women who stick it out, sometimes for decades, just to have their moment in the sun. Or, in North London, their glory in the rain. I came to this game as an American outsider, enthralled by the history and by the passion. And here today, in the cold London rain, I feel just a little bit closer to the people that made this beautiful game what it is. Thank you.